everybody people are fair in the eye. On the last day the U.S. troops departed Afghanistan, this interpreter, a U.S. citizen, was among the hundreds left behind. I screaming and telling him, hey, listen guys, I'm one of you guys. You have to take me. You can't leave me behind like this. Blocked from getting into Kabul's airport, he tells us about an interaction with the Taliban while he stood stranded outside. Then I was talking to one of them, and another one stayed behind me, he, he, and he tell another Taliban, let me shoot this guy. He have American passport. Let me shoot him in the head. And my little brother just pulled my hand from outside. He said, let's go disappear in the crowd. We disappear. Just days earlier, he lost his brother and nephew in the bombing at the airport. And before that, he says a family member was taken by the Taliban. My sister's uh, husband is a police officer. And the second day, some people come to her house and take her husband. And, the, and, and these days, we don't know where is his husband. Fearing for his own safety, the interpreter fled for the Uzbekistan border. He eventually crossed and is hoping to secure a flight home to the U.S. They were with us through some really trying times. Nashua resident Chris Parks served in Afghanistan. He has been working with Senator Gene Shaheen's office, as well as with his contacts in the Middle East to help interpreters left behind find a safe passage to the U.S. At the end of the day, it's the right thing to do. We have a shared bond that people that weren't there don't, they won't have and they don't understand. Now, this week, Senator Shaheen sent a letter to the Department of State requesting an update on the country's evacuation efforts. Her office have, has submitted more than 2,000 names to that department, many with special immigrant visas. Reporting live in the studio, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9.